let's take out our Bibles and learn together. Greetings, brothers and sisters all over the world. We welcome you to today's very, very important uh, video discussion with Baruch. And of course, Baruch, welcome back to Israel. Good to see you. Thank you, Christian. Good to see you and very good to be back in Israel. We had a, a very successful uh, visiting of several countries and, and pastoral training and conferences, but it's always good to be back in the land of Israel. Praise God. Praise God. So uh, this is a very, very important, uh, let's say, prophecy update video that we're doing today. Um, as always, we welcome the Spanish speaking viewers as well. So that's why you will see a lot of headings and scriptures, both in English and Spanish. And um, we're going to touch a number of issues that are happening around the globe at the moment. But once again, always the most important thing is we're going to take it back to scripture from a biblical perspective. And just before I hand over to you, Baruch, for your opening comments, before we get started, uh, you know, we've, we've had an overwhelming result of wonderful positive comments and emails sent to us. Uh, there's only been a couple that they've questioned why uh, we sometimes show certain news headlines and political things that are happening in the world. From my perspective, it's quite simple just to show the accuracy of the Bible and the prophecy that's in the Bible. Um, but over to you for your opening comments, Brooke. We, we need to be people who are aware of where this world's going. It confirms, as you said, the accuracy of Scripture. We see that there are things that are prophesied, things that, that oftentimes are very uh, hard to accept. Will people really call evil good? But certainly in our days, we see horrible things, clearly things that are against the, the sense of de decency that every conscience has, this is wrong, people are embracing it, supporting it. So these headlines are important, and many people miss them. So I believe we're doing a good service in, in calling people's attention to the, the quick departure of this world from just a sense of decency and morality. Correct. Amen. So if you're ready to be wrong, well, let's, uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen, and let's begin. Okay, so just by way of introduction before we kick off this uh, teaching, just made a little comment there about what we're going to study today. So as we see the Great Reset, I won't mention what's in between uh, parentheses there, uh, but uh, due to the algorithms and certain, we want to avoid certain uh, strikes with YouTube, of course. Taking momentum, uh, Satan is very active by increasing demonic activity, which is usually camouflaged to see the social justice equality, cashless society, healthcare, surveillance, and as well as an increase in violence and lawlessness. So let's look at some examples. Let's go to the word of God, first of all, Brooke. Matthew 24, 37, 39. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until a flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Over you, Brooke, for your opening comments. <clears throat> when we look at this passage in Matthew 24, we see soon after that two were in the field, one taken, one left. And we have the, the language of our blessed hope, the rapture. And what we need to see is this, that from a worldly standpoint, people are going to be living their life normally. Things are going to be, be evil, things are going to be unrighteous, but the world will be going on fairly normal before the wrath of God falls. And here in the scripture, it's, it's speaking about the flood as a symbol of God's wrath, and people were marrying, they were being given in marriage, eating and drinking, and, and things were normal. So we need to understand that the world's not going to be in total chaos, but if we look carefully at the scripture, it does speak about how believers are going to be persecuted for standing up for righteousness, morality, decency, the, the standards of God. So all of this is coming to shape in our days. Amen. And before we uh, uh, move forward in this video, 
I think it's very important, and I'll remind everyone again that um, this is we will be showing a short clip uh, very, very soon. Uh, it's probably about a 12, 13 minute clip. Uh, it will be done a little bit differently because Baruch or I will be making some comments during this clip. I do ask for viewer discretion. I would not recommend children looking at this video that we'll be showing, uh, but it, it is very confrontational, but very necessary in these days. And when we get to it, you will all see why. Daniel 12, 4, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Before I hand over to you, Baruch, we're going to look at this in some of the clips as well about how knowledge is increasing and travel increases. But over to you for your comments on this scripture from Daniel. Yeah. This verse speaks about how Daniel was given some revelation, prophetic truth. It was not for his days, but for the future. And as you just pointed out, one of the things that will let us know that we're in this time is an explosion of knowledge. Here, knowledge will increase. It has been, but but certainly recently, there is a large increase in, in knowledge being presented, available and such. So again, another indicator that we are rapidly moving towards that, that end time period. Thank you. Now, this is uh, what we mentioned previously. So we do ask for viewer discretion uh, with this video. <clears throat> and uh, if you're ready, Baruch, we'll get right into it. Highnesses, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good morning on what is the first official day of World Government Summit here at Dubai Expo 2020. And the title of this session, Are We Ready for a New World Order? Well, the organizers here are nothing if not ambitious. This is, I think you will agree, a daunting subject for discussion at just after 9 a.m. on a Wednesday morning here in the relative calm of Expo 2020. But tackle it, we must. Now is the historical moment of time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system. We have a unique but rapidly shrinking window of opportunity to learn lessons and reset ourselves on a more sustainable path. It is an opportunity we have never had before, and may never have again. So we must use all the levers we have at our disposal, knowing that each and every one of us has a vital role to play. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis. And now is the time for all of us to define our own role. What is it that would make it so that history would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset? The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. It is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reintegrate and rebalance our world. For this, instead of carrying your wallet in your back pocket or your purse, a tech company wants you to keep it under your skin. Mm, all right, so let's explain here. Wallet More is selling microchips implanted in your hand as an alternate payment. Could this be the future? Maybe. Once you set up your card info in the company's app, look at this. It says payments could be as easy as swiping your hand over a card reader. Right now, chips are. Uh, Baruch, just before we move on with that uh, view of technology, we know that uh, we've spoken before in the past that uh, the healthcare solution, I don't want to use the actual name that uh, they're forcing upon people, is not the mark of the beast. Here we see clearly that technology has advanced so much that they're already market shipping people in many countries around the world without having to use cash. So 
in your mind, is that setting the stage for the future to when people will be voluntarily, not tricked into, receiving the mark of the beast in allegiance to the Antichrist? Well, I do agree that the mark of the beast is just that, pledging allegiance to the Antichrist, his uh, government, his empire. It's going to involve the ability to, to, to do business, to buy and to sell. And, and what I would say is that for me, we know in the Bible there's that commandment of tefillin or phylactery is the New Testament word of abounding the word of God, his commandments upon our arm and our, our, our forehead. Yes. And what I see in regard to the mark of the beast is a replacing, putting away the instructions of God and embracing the instructions of ultimately the Antichrist and his empire. What's significant is this, the push for a cashless society is that it makes it very easy to cause people not to be able to conduct business. Right. So you may have millions of dollars at your disposal, but if you do not accept the, the mark of the beast, you will not be able to utilize that money. So the important thing here in regard to the mark of the beast, it wants to stop, curtail people from e being able to use their resources unless they pledge that allegiance to the Antichrist empire. And we don't know how that's going to look, but certainly technology, and I think this is the point that you're emphasizing, technology today is already there in some form, whatever it, it's going to be manifested at. It's already there to implement something that can cause a person to be cut off from being able to conduct financial transactions. And let me just simply say, living in Israel, Israel is part of the international banking system. Uh, we have tons of problems bringing money over, paying things. They keep asking us, the Israeli bank that I do business with, and it's the same for all of them, to come in repeatedly to verify things, even though the primary thing is what we've been receiving here for, for over 20 years. And it comes in on the same day. It's the same amount of money for the last eight or nine years, no change. But every time we're called in, it's like, what is this? What, what is this about? And I always say, well, hasn't this been going on for, for over 20 years and the same amount for, for nine years? I mean, but it's simply trying to control, trying to get more information. And that's what it's always about, getting more personal information. And information can lead to dominance. And this is a part of this reset. And, and uh, like you said, I mean, the, the, the technology, uh, the infrastructure is now in place. Like it, it says in the book of Revelation that no one can buy or sell without the mark. So... You know, it, it's quite interesting how far we've come. So let's uh, proceed. And this is uh, very confronting, this following section, but very important for people to watch. Hey, family, we, we don't even have affordable child care. In this Sorry, I just also uh, interrupt this. I'll call her a lady, uh, just to be kind, but... She is obviously upset about the potential uh, decision to ban and make abortions illegal. So she's obviously well in favor of abortion. And we just need to see the anger and the rage that basically the Antichrist spirit within these people just comes out. This freaking country. Okay, and the people who fight against those kinds of laws are Republicans. And yet... What do you want them to do?
care about you. Make sure you understand that you feel it in your bones. They don't care about you at all. All of that fundraising, all of that canvassing, all of that hard work on the ground, they can't even get a voting rights bill passed. They're losers. How dare they? How dare they tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body? How dare they? How dare they try to stop her from determining her own future? How dare they try to deny women their rights and their freedom? When you have an abortion, what exactly do you do to like have the abortion? You go to the doctor and they put this little straw inside of your cervix and then inside of your uterus and then they just suck the pregnancy out and it was like a crappy dentist appointment or something it was just like ah this is like a body thing that's kind of uncomfortable but then it was over and i felt really just grateful that i wasn't pregnant anymore isn't that amazing baruch how they're conditioning children to commit murder how they make it so uh, like a bad dentist appointment uh, that's to where humans have degraded life what are your comments on that bro it's very important that we we show this because i talk to many people who have kind of checked out of of watching the news getting information they they are very discouraged about where this world's going as we are but they're not paying attention to where things are, are changing, how they're changing, how quickly they're changing. And we need to realize that there is a significant departure from what was, and it's moving rapidly and child sacrifice. And that's really what it is. Abortion. And we see examples of this in the scripture that they sacrificed their sons and their daughters to Moloch. This is something that's demonic, as you pointed out. It's something that is dishonoring uh, of God. It is murder. And for the most part, we see that, that many people are silent of it. And we need to realize what's taking place in order that we can be a voice for the, the standards of God and, and the righteous uh, desires of God that we embrace and demonstrate. Amen. And this is a, a very uh, popular doctor who made, uh, was very brave to make this statement to let people know exactly what happens. Unlike what that woman just lied about, that it's just like a bad dentist appointment. He will now share, it will go for about a minute, of what actually takes place during abortion. Trimester DNA abortions performed between roughly 14 and 24 weeks of gestation. Your patient today is 17 years old. She's 22 weeks pregnant. Her baby is the length of your hand plus a couple of inches. And she's been feeling her baby kick for the last several weeks. She's asleep on an operating room table. You walk into that operating room scrubbed and gowned and after removing laminaria, you introduce a suction catheter into the uterus. This is a 14 French suction catheter. If she were 12 weeks pregnant or less, Basically, the width of your hand are smaller. You could basically do the entire procedure with this. But babies this big don't fit through catheters this size. After suctioning the amniotic fluid out from around the baby, you introduce an instrument called the sofa clamp. It's about 13 inches long. It's made of stainless steel. The business end of this clamp is about two and a half inches long and a half inch wide. There are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. A DNA procedure is a blind abortion. So picture yourself introducing this and grabbing anything you can blindly and pull, and I do mean hard, and out pops a leg about that big, which you put down on the table next to you. Reach in again, pull again, pull out an arm about the same length, which you put down on the table next to you, and use this instrument again and again to tear out the spine, the intestines, the heart and lungs. Head in the baby that size is about the size of a large plum can't see it, but you pretty good idea you've got it if you've got your instrument around something and your fingers are spread about as far as they go. You know you did it right if you crush down the instrument white material runs out of the cervix, that was the baby's brains. Then you could pull out skull pieces. When you have a day like I had a lot of times, sometimes a little face comes back and stares back at you. 
Congratulations, you just successfully performed a second trimester DNA abortion. You just affirmed your right to choose. And myself and my child, that's who makes the decision. And one of the things I really want to point out before we go is the reason abortion came about. Women in this country. Sorry, before I go on with uh, this woman, uh, of course, a very pro abortion. They even contradict themselves. So she just said, this is a decision between myself, my doctor and my child. How can an innocent baby in the womb make that decision? I mean, I, I can't, I, I'm sometimes speechless that people actually listen to the people like this. Lived forever with it being illegal, okay? Women, when they decide something is not right for them, they're gonna take it into their own hands. Care about me as a, as a human being? You should know three things. Getting an abortion is not easy. Making that decision is not easy. It's not something people do lightly. It's not something that you can just do. It, it is a hard, awful decision that people make. And if you don't have the wherewithal to understand that, to start this conversation with, I know how hard this must be for you. If you're starting it, by telling me I'm going to burn in hell, then you're not looking out for me as a human being, whether I subscribe to your religion or not. What are your thoughts on that comment, bro? Here's an individual that's just rebellious towards God, a person who misrepresents the facts of it. As you pointed out, no one thinks about the child. It's always her body. No, there's a separate body within that womb. And once conception takes place, we see that legally that child, in my opinion, should have rights. And in some situations, that child does. But when it comes to abortion, those rights that the child is afforded in many other things disappear. And what dominates is if that woman wants to, to end the pregnancy, which is to murder a child. She is given right now under the laws in America, the, the freedom to, to choose that. That does not in any way condone or make it right before God. And we're called to a very different level of, of obedience and, and laws from God than this world recognizes. And we need to stand for those. And that's why we're doing this discussion. I mean, thank you. Now, this uh, person calls herself a, a Christian pastor, but yet you'll see not only the ignorance, but it's really someone demonic camouflaging themselves as a Christian pastor who really knows nothing about the word of God. Let's uh, listen. But first of all, that's key. You can't look at, read the Bible and find anything that's against abortion. So it's an argument from, from ab absent thoughts in scripture. This is um, a video when abortion was legalized in Argentina. You see thousands and thousands of women here celebrating when the announcement was made, which I feel for because I'm from South America. I love the South American people, but this is actually heartbreaking to see the celebrations of so many people that they're actually given the green light to commit murder. A woman appears to become possessed while shopping in the supermarket, and the apparent incident was all captured on surveillance. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
A shopper in China attempted to assist her. She let out a loud scream right into the audience. The video was posted on China's version of YouTube, and thousands of viewers were circulating the footage online. sad state of affairs it's simply that antichrist spirit mocking god denying god uh blaspheming god one of the things we need to realize is that when we look at the scripture it speaks about that beast that empire and it has blasphemous names hmm. and that is the spirit of the antichrist blasphemy hates god hates righteousness is against the love of god they don't want people to experience the goodness of god they want to play a role with Satan in order to bring eternal adversity and suffering into people's life. That's what they're being manipulated by the enemy to do. They may not understand that, but that is the reality of such behavior. And again, mocking, hating God, everything that God stands for. Amen. He will say this is a uh, few people have seen this, but this is uh, a comedian that uh, mocks the Lord, and let's see what happens. Donald is out of a Valley Hospital tonight after she collapsed over the weekend during a show at the Tempe Improv. I don't mean to brag, I don't care, but I want you to know, Dubs that booster, flu shot, and I'm gonna be honest, I have the shingle shot too. Traveled, went to Mexico twice, did shows, meet and greets, Never got COVID. Clearly, Jesus loves me the most. Seriously, so nice, so nice. And a fractious skull. Why should I respect? 
pushes mean-minded, stupid God to create a world which is so full of injustice and pain. That's what I'm saying. You think you're going to get in? No, no. But I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his turn. But we need to remember. First of all, give an honor to God and our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Oh, cannot sit back and wait for a Savior. You can't opt out because you don't feel sufficiently inspired by this or that particular day. This is not a rock concert, this is not Coachella. Don't need a Messiah. Your comments, Baruch, before we uh, move on. Again, that's that spirit of mocking God, using words that they very much uh, are aware of, Messiah, Savior, Lord, yes. and they misappropriate them. They, they simply will not accept the fact that God is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. We're called to be submissiveness. And the opposite of a submissive spirit before God submitting to his instruction is rebelliousness. And this is another aspect of the Antichrist. He wants to rebel. He wants to put his throne over the throne of God and not have to conform to anything that, that God says is right, good, holy, any of that. And that's what we're seeing dominate the world. And when we speak about this reset, this change that is coming, it is a change, a resetting of things in order that it agrees with the Antichrist spirit, his empire standards, and which are totally in conflict with the standards of God. So you mentioned it's time to do battle. Of course, we're not talking about violence in any sense of that, but spiritual warfare yes. one of the great assets that god has given us in the spiritual arsenal that we have is is fasting fasting and prayer uh, uh being a blessing to others so we're not calling people to do anything that's violent we're calling people to be faithful to do the will of god to walk in in humbleness and to to speak love to bless others to help others and give them truth to bring them out of this deception. And we know that one of the major tools of the enemy is deception. Amen. This, of course, is a headline that has been uh, right across the news all over the world. Uh, it is such a tragedy to see any loss of life, especially children, innocent children. Uh, but it's interesting that <clears throat> just in the U.S. alone, there's been 212 mass shooting, shootings this year alone. And uh, we just want to look at the scripture in Matthew 24, 12, 13. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Once again, we're not only just, uh, of course, we mentioned the USA because it's, it's so predominantly on the news, but this isn't just isolated to the USA. It's all over the world, this kind of increase in violence. What are your thoughts, Baruch, especially in line with that scripture? Yeah, it's, it's going to get worse. Uh, one of the things we know, the Antichrist is called the man of lawlessness. Yes. Now, that is truly the spirit of the Antichrist, lawlessness. And we need to see it for how the Bible reveals it. We hear lawlessness, and we might just think those things that are bad, those things are against the, the standards and such of society, perhaps, and bringing in a major type of change. But the word here is anomos. Nomos is the Greek word for Torah, and the prefix alpha means negate. So the Antichrist spirit is one that is against the law, the Torah of God. And the main thing the Torah teaches is righteousness. So the Antichrist spirit is against everything that God says is right, and that is righteous. And, and that's where the world's going. So there's going to be more and more. Uh, conflicting in this world between the standards of God, those who embrace those and, and want to walk faithfully, and those who are of the Antichrist spirit and hostile, and that's an important word, 
hostile to this. So that's why we want to teach and share with people, get ready, a time of persecution is coming. We're never promised to avoid tribulation and persecution. In fact, Acts 14 verse 22 says, it's necessary to go through much tribulations to enter into the kingdom of God. Paul is, is praising the church at Thessaloniki because it's enduring persecutions and tribulations. None of this relates to the wrath of God. The source is man. The source is demonic. The source is satanic. We, we see that happening in the world. It's going to get worse. The promise that we have is found in 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, that we have not been appointed for wrath, but to obtain that, that kingdom victory salvation. So we need to understand the biblical terms and not allow some theologians to, to hijack terms and give us a false impression that before anything difficult happens, that the church is going to be removed. We won't be here for the wrath of God, but there is coming a most intense, the most intense time of ever for persecution of those who want to walk in the righteous standards of God. Thank you. Let's get prepared, church. Now, another thing that's been on the news lately that Biden, and once again, it's not only Biden, signing over healthcare to the World Health Organization. Uh, the, the USA is not the only one. Some of the amendments, and this is in public news, so declare a public health emergency in the US. So this is what the World Health Organization uh, is proposing as amendments. So they can declare a public health emergency. Um, they, not only US, but any other country that has joined to this and agreed to this, required to report to a compliance committee and they will punish nations that do not follow the World Health Organization directives. Your comments, bro. Yeah, um, my understanding is that this is proposed. No nation has yet signed it. It's in the process of, of being implemented. We don't know if it's going to be implemented. That's what, what I, I believe that's accurate, that uh, it's only proposed. But it simply shows that there's going to be many different attempts through many different means in order to, to usher in a new, and one of the things we saw, and we didn't comment, but I think it's very, very significant, is that they were talking about a world government summit. Yes. There is in plan, and we see this in the book of Revelation, that the Antichrist empire is going to be over the entire world. Mm. And this is exactly when we use that term reset and the other terms and such. Uh, it's for a government, a world government, to be in place. And what's interesting is that the people who, who propose this and are in favor of this, they can use that term, and they're not censored. But if we use a certain term that they use, right. if we point it out for what it is and how it's related to the Antichrist spirit, then we are censored. We receive a, a strike. Our channel is, is uh, repressed on YouTube and removed on other uh, media, social media as fake news. And let me just give you an example of this. There's a senator from, I believe, Tennessee. Her name is Marsha Blackburn. And she made a comment, and the comment was, I don't believe that biological males should compete against biological females in sports. Yes. Now, that's an opinion. People can agree with that or disagree. I happen to agree with it, but we're all free to, to, to make our own decisions. But, but we see that that was removed from social media as hate speech. Hmm. Now, the thing that we need to see is this. More and more, and I've said this a long time ago, when we stand for the values of scripture, we're going to be eventually called a bigot. It's going to be hate speech. We're going to be labeled on all types of negative terms. Get ready for that and just, just allow that. It's not going to or shouldn't change us from standing up and speaking that. But the whole idea of hate speech is being, being changed and reapplied to anything that this, this objective to establish the principles of a world government, anyone that speaks against that, eventually that's hate speech. You're narrow-minded, you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're against uh, uh, humanity. This is where we're going. And I'm amazed that, that we get, I personally, I'm sure you do too as well, Christian, 
that we get many videos against doing or many emails against doing these videos because people say that they're going to upset we're informing they're important and i'll say this um what happens whether we get removed from youtube whether people don't watch whether people you know unsubscribe that's not important to us what's important to us is being faithful to the direction and the content that we truly believe that the holy spirit is leading us to to share i appreciate you christian for for putting these videos together they are vital they are significant and we'll just leave the consequences to god it's not important to us whether our subscribers go up or down whether we're removed or not we're going to be faithful and just what the consequences are they belong to god amen and like you said baruch <clears throat> it's um it's interesting that we're labeled as bigots or hate speech and um you know the truth offends people scriptures are truth and they will offend some people and like we shared in one of our past videos was that you can be in a room full of people you can be talking about muhammad buddha joseph smith no problems whatsoever but the minute you mention yeshua jesus christ people get offended and they just move away from you but it's a sign of the times i guess once again, we're going to focus a little bit more on, on babies and the crime and the murder of abortion. An abort is an article in a newspaper. It's aborted. A woman celebrates her abortion with cake and party and brags on Twitter. So if you see the cake, usually they put it's a boy. She's put it's aborted. I mean, disgusting is the only word that I can use, but I wanted to make a reference to Isaiah 5 verse 20. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who puts darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Any comments there, Baruch? Yeah, what we see simply is a changing of the order. We have God's standards. They want to turn it upside down. It's a spirit of rebelliousness. And therefore, what they're going to do, and we see this in a lot of different applications, but, but they will accuse us of being people who are unrighteous. In fact, there's one uh, news commentator in the United States that says uh, a, a certain political party is the anti-Christian party. And it's speaking about those who are, are pro-life, those who are against the homosexual agenda, those who stand for the things of, of scripture. And what we find is there's just going to be this, this distortion against truth. So they'll do whatever, as uh, a fellow Israeli that was on uh, earlier, when he says, the bigger the lie, the better, and he speaks about the greatest fake news, he says, is the Bible, you see the, the mentality and the hostility that they have for God and for, for his word. Get ready. We're going to suffer. Be prepared. Be praying. There is coming a major time of conflict for those who want to walk humbly and faithfully and righteously with the Lord. Amen. And uh, on the subject of abortion, before we move on, I mean, some of the statistics are that just in U.S. alone, uh, they've registered 3,000 abortions per day, just in the U.S. alone. And these are their own stats uh, that they develop that 2% only are due to rape and 98% are done at will or at convenience. I had a uh, someone write to me and say, well, you know, it, it's not fair um, that you criticize if a woman's raped and decides to have an abortion. From my point of view, when I before I hand over to you, bro, there are so many people around the world that are looking to adopt children. So from my point of view, it's better to let that child live. And if you, for some reason, either don't want the child or can't afford for whatever circumstance you can put that baby up for adoption and once again this final comment <clears throat> may be a bit controversial but it's it's not from love israel this is my personal comment i would always say allow the child to live and execute the rapist the capital punishment that's from my point of view <clears throat> so i'm not speaking on behalf of baruch or love israel but let the child live execute the rapist anyway over to you bro for your comments yeah i have no pro problem with that and and sin 
is is always unfair meaning sin affects the innocent in in oftentimes a very adverse way and therefore of course it's it's tragic when when a woman goes through such a a horrendous experience and it's hard it's unfair but when life is created god has a purpose that child is created in the image of god so no matter what the the means of conception uh, uh do not destroy life it's murder it is wrong and and certainly it's it's difficult and that's where people can come in and minister and love and help and assist and and i can tell you that that i have seen firsthand how how believers will step in and help and provide and do whatever and uh i have not ever heard of a woman who decided not to get an abortion and and have a child regretting that decision but but i can tell you that there are counsel countless women who have have chosen abortion and regret it greatly so we we want to love that that mother and that child Absolutely. we want to minister to that situation and and bring something good out of such an evil act as as rape amen thank you so mr biden once again he made a uh, comment that he's looking to divide jerusalem and that's from a newspaper article there I just wanted to put the uh, scripture in Zechariah 12, verse 3, and it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. And all who would have it away surely will be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. What, what are your comments, Baruch, on people? Because Biden's not the first. Uh, there have been many others that have wanted to divide Jerusalem. What are your comments on that? <clears throat> it's 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 growing in in popularity and why because god has a purpose for jerusalem and and people as we spoke of earlier rebelliousness they do not want god's purpose for that city in fact it's very common it's growing even within the evangelical movement that people were saying that uh there's no more significance the land of of, of israel to the city of jerusalem that's all in the past and you have one individual who's who's in an interview with a a well-known christian magazine calls the the new jerusalem the kingdom of god he calls it the new palestine and it's it just very informative that people don't want to use the terminology of scripture so yes jerusalem is the apple of god's uh, uh eye so to speak and it's important to him. It should be important to people who want to honor him and submit to his word. But it's going to be a subject of great controversy. But we know that in the end, Messiah will come. He will defeat the enemies of, of Israel, of God, and establish his kingdom, a kingdom of righteousness, according to the standards of God for that thousand-year millennial kingdom where he'll rule from Jerusalem. Amen. Thank you. Um, once again, we're looking at um, the World Economic Forum. They're meeting as we speak. Um, and it's interesting, the, the comments that they make. Klaus Schwab pledges the world can find salvation at Davos 2022. I can imagine what you're thinking, Baruch, over you. Just again, you know, misappropriating words, using religious words to say that that no, these things can be found through man. And that's what it comes down to. Who's the savior? Is it man or, or the son of God, who is the son of man as well? But, but even though he's fully human, he is the son of God. And, and God sent him into this world. So who has the solution? Humanity or, or God? And what these individuals are about and we don't, we don't hate them. We love them. We pray for them. We want to see change, a godly change in their life. But, but they are thinking that humanity is the Savior, not God. And, and this is what it comes down to. Choose. Can you save yourself or do you have to rely upon the provision that God the Father made by sending his only begotten son, Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ, into this world to die upon the cross? Amen. Thank you. The uh, next slide we'll look at, it's now popping up everywhere in the news, the monkeypox. 
I wonder whether this will be a new distraction, Baruch, as to uh, you know what we encountered in the world two and a half years ago. Then there was the Ukraine war. Uh, then there's been inflation all over the world, which we'll look at a little summary shortly. And now this. And interestingly enough, rare monkeypox virus arrives just as Bill Gates and the World Health Organization predicted. Apparently they predicted this last year that it would arrive in May of this year. And vaccines are miraculously ready. What are your comments, bro? I, I know so little about this. I, I did come across on, on looking at the internet, on news, and I'm talking about legitimate news, news places, popular ones about this know virtually nothing other than we know this and that is that the world is going to continue to manufacture to exploit sometimes some very real crises and, and hardships they are going to to utilize these in order to gain control this is what it's about we want people to be free to serve god as as the spirit leads and and that can mean rejecting but not in the way of, of utilizing the Antichrist, his deception in order to persecute others. We stand against that. So anyway, we're just going to see more and more things. You, you mentioned, we'll get into this inflation. You print money. Obviously, more money comes into circulation. The value of it's going to go down. It's going to take more to, to purchase. There's laws of, of economics. And, and all of this is for one purpose, and that is to bring about catastrophe, because when people are in a catastrophe, they, they feel desperate, and that's when change is, is the easiest to inflict upon people. I can remember when I was a freshman in college many, many years ago, and the political science course I was taking, the professor said this, and it wasn't political, I believe it's a fact. He says that, that instability is a catalyst to change. And the greater instability, the greater change that can be made in society because people will be fearful and scared and they'll latch on and agree to anyone who promises them relief. No matter what the terms for that relief is, people are oftentimes willing to submit to that and embrace a new leader. This is what this all is about. Yes, and they also say out of chaos comes order as well. Um, so a bit of a summary here, Baruch. Inflation rising. We see an apostasy in the church. There's wheat shortages, famines, weather abnormalities, earthquakes increasing in frequencies, increasing violence, including mass shootings. What are your comments, Baruch, or what are your thoughts for the viewers watching how we should be preparing, uh, what we should be doing. Before I hand over to you, Baruch, I, like yourself, agree that uh, we don't agree with all these doomsday preppers. We don't agree with people like Jim Baker that exploit believers by fear into selling products that you should store in your basement for seven years. Um, I personally do think, though, that there will be more lockdowns. That's my personal opinion. And I really encourage people around me just to stock up just during those short lockdown periods uh, so that you have some essentials first day, just the essentials. I'm not talking about for seven, 10 years period, anything like that. But what are your comments, Baruch, looking at this, your recommendation to people watching today? Well, unfortunately, what has, has happened over the last two, two and a half years because of the pandemic has really taken, and it's, it's discouraging, it, uh, I believe, uh, manifests the spiritual condition of the church of believers, and that is many of these things that we're talking about, lockdowns and such, being unable to, in some people's mind, to assemble. We, we assembled. We're not going to stop meeting as believers because of, of being told not to. But this has really taken a significant toll. Uh, uh, church attendance is down, and many other things are, are plaguing the, the work of God. Uh, I just got back from Ethiopia, and because of the war in the Ukraine, uh, there's a significant gas shortage 
in Ethiopia. And when things are short, the prices go up. And it's really taking a, a serious uh, a toll upon individuals there. The, the average time to wait for gas is four hours. And, and we see our major contact there that we work with, uh, the conflict between tribal conflict in, in Africa, in his areas, has, has hampered his ability to move and do ministry in these areas because of, of the conflict. And we're talking about, for lack of a better wor word, warfare, we see that there's great uh, uh, acts of violence between Muslims and Christians in, in Africa and Ethiopia specifically. And, and all of this is hindering the, the work of God being done in one sense. And that means that we need to, to be bold. We need to be committed. It may mean that the people risk their lives in order to state the truth, go into these places, not to allow physical danger to to determine uh, to to determine how we're going to behave but but we're called to to have a martyr spirit meaning willing to lay down our life for the things that we believe in so as darkness approaches when we stand for truth will be a greater source of light and that's what we need to do stand for truth continue to be a blessing and for our organization we are are, are donating more to to other countries because we see an immediate need in certain places, and we want to be involved in that. We want to have an influence in the body of believers in as many places as we can. And praise God, as we do this, God has provided the resources. And we're always amazed with, with the generosity of God's people and how God moves people in order that we can be a funnel in order to, to help those who are in a much uh, uh, less fortunate position financially than than we are amen yes god is faithful i've said this before things seem to be falling apart around the world but the truth is prophetically they are falling into place um your final comments and encouragement to believers bro any other final words just, just that we should not be be alarmed by these things uh we shouldn't be be surprised by these things they are, are necessary. The Bible says that these birth pains, and I'm not saying these are the birth pains, but they're certainly uh, growing near, putting things in place for what Messiah spoke of that will happen, these, these greater famines, these greater wars and conflicts and earthquakes and, and pestilence. It's going to be increasing in the last days. We're seeing the foundation of that. And don't be surprised. Be encouraged. Be faithful, be praying, and realize this is an opportunity for us to demonstrate our faith. Amen. And especially when, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brooke, but the Lord tells us in his word, do not fear or fear not uh, 365 times, which is amazing. So that is one uh, very repeated message. Do not fear. And uh, as I always like to say, when these things begin to happen, look up. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. So, brothers and sisters, I'd like to thank you all for uh, uh, spending this time with us. I hope it's been a blessing to you. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe, share, and like this video. Please also feel free to write to it as write to us at Australasia at loveisrael.org. We welcome your comments and your emails. And once again, Baruch, thank you so much for your time. I've certainly been blessed by uh, this discussion. I know it's a bit controversial and a little bit um, uh, powerful for some people, but I thought it was very necessary. Over to you for your final comments. Thank you, Christian, for, for doing all the work and putting this together and organizing things. Uh, you are a blessing to, to many, many people. Uh, you have, have caused our organization to, to grow. And we're about the same thing, and that is sharing biblical truth in order that there might be a Holy Spirit influence in the lives of people. That's the bottom line. That's what we're committed to. So thank you. Amen. Well, we praise God for everything we do. So thank you, brothers and sisters, and hopefully we will see you, God willing, very soon. So from Brooklyn, Israel, from myself here in Sydney, Australia, shalom and be blessed.